today we're looking at 6.1, um, example two. So a couple things to look at first. Um, exponential growth model. Our equation is y equals a times b to the x. That's what we were looking at um, in the previous example. When it's growth though, this b value is greater than one. And we can break it down a little bit further. So y equals a times one plus r raised to the t. So this is another way to write the growth model. This one plus r is taking the place of the b, and we can say that this is raised to the t in, in terms of time, or x. <clears throat> so decay, starting with the example that we looked at in the previous example, y equals a times b to the x can be rewritten in terms of decay as y equals a times 1 minus r raised to the t. So this helps us to determine how much something is growing or how much something is decaying. So example two, solving a real life problem. The value of a car in thousands of dollars can be approximated by the model y equals 25 times 0.85 to the t, where t is the number of years since the car was new. So number of years since the car was new. A, uh, tell whether the model represents exponential growth or exponential decay. B, identify the annual percent increase or decrease in the value of the car. And C, estimate when the value of the car will be $8,000. So we have this form, y equals a times b to the x, that we're starting with. Um, and we just looked at y equals um, a times 1 plus r to the t or y equals a times 1 minus r to the t depending on whether it was um, a growth or decay. So we are looking at 25 times 0.85 to the t. So a is our initial amount, which is 25. b is our factor, which is the 0.85. Um, and x, we've replaced it with a t because it's based on time. So we, in the previous models, looked at if our b value is greater than 1, then it is growth. If our b value is less than 1 but greater than 0, it is decay. Our B value here, um, our B is less than 1, so what that means is that we have decay, and our decay is equal to 0.85. So B asks us to identify the annual percent increase or decrease in the value of the car. Since we have decay, our B that we're looking at is 1 minus R, and this is equal to 0.85. So decay, we have decay, so we're looking at the B value, the 1 minus R, and that gives us the rate, the R is our rate. So we want to solve for the R. So <clears throat> 1 minus R equals the 0.85. So you can subtract 0.85. So we have 1 minus 
minus r equals 0. Add the r to both sides. So 1 minus 0.85 gives us 0.15, and that is our r. Or we can also say it's a 15% decrease. C asks you to estimate when the value of the car will be $8,000. So, um, the value of the car in thousands of dollars. So, this is the value of our car, $8,000, is what we're going to substitute in for Y. We're asked to find um, when. So, that is our time, that's our T. But when we graph it, it's also our x value. So $8,000. So this is going to be set equal to 8 because this is the value of the car in thousands of dollars. So 8 equals 25 times 0.85 to the t. So this is what we're looking for. And this is also the t, this was our y, this is our x. So what we can do is graph it and look for x value when y equals 8. So we have y equals we don't necessarily need to look at the graph itself other than to just say, yep, yeah, that's what it looks like. So we have y equals 25 times 0.85 raised to the x. So graph it. Is it decay? It is, we don't have a really good window here. So let's make our so there you go. That gives you a better picture of what it looks like. And now we want to look at the table. So we're looking for where y equals 8. So y is close to 8 here, so that means our x, or our time. So when y is close to 8, t or x is approximately 7. So where you were asked for, t is the number of years, so about 7 years, after about 7 years, then the value of our car will be about $8,000. So remember, we replaced the 8,000 with the eight since the value of the car was in thousands of dollars. So at about seven years, our car will be worth $8,000.